This is So's Modern Vintage, I'm Rosie and it's really lovely to have you here. I have popped onto the vlog today to show you some of the things that I made during December. Now you might remember back in my last vlog that I said I had set myself a bit of a challenge because I wanted to get five things done in December, which was four things for me and one thing for my daughter. Well, luckily, my daughter decided that she didn't need the skirt um, quite as urgently as she thought. So it meant that I then only had to focus on myself to do my own selfish stitching in December, which was really nice because then I could take my time a little bit more than I thought I was going to have to. Um, so I wanted to show you what I've done. Now, the first thing I made was the beautiful all seasons um, dress and skirt from a company called Now and Then, but um, they are they can be found on Instagram under the name Till the Sun Goes Down. So I'll pop that in the um, information box below so that you can have a link straight to their site. Um, now I visited Now and Then Patterns uh, back in October when I went to the knitting and stitching show, I visited their stand and they had the most beautiful version. It was the skirt version of this. So I've got to try and, uh, where are we? Here we are. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a skirt version and they'd made it in this beautiful mustard needle cord. And I just knew that my version had to be exactly like that. <laughs> um, I was kind, meant to say, actually, I was kindly gifted this pattern by Till the Sun Goes Down. Um, so, yeah, they gave me the pattern free of charge in return for a review on um, YouTube, which is what I'm doing now. And so anyway, so I was then on the search for some mustard needle cord. I found it in a few places, but as you know, um, I have to keep all of my sewing on a quite a tight budget. So I was looking for a good bargain and I found it with Jay at the Fabric Edit. Now you've probably already heard of her amazing sales that she does once a month over on her Instagram. I'll put a link below though, if you haven't seen her before. And she uh, spends all month scouring um, Walthamstow fabric markets and also visiting wholesalers to get fantastic bargains and so then once a month she does her live sale um, on on her Instagram um, feed and everybody just quickly has to say yes two meters please before it's sold out you know so you're really lucky if you get the one that you want but they're all such brilliant prices so I got the mustard cord for I think it was four pounds a meter so you know, a brilliant bargain and well worth well worth searching for. You know, I find that found the one I really wanted, so that's good. Um, anyway, so I got the corn delivered and um, started to cut out my pattern. Now, the one thing I would say about this pattern is it is a very very easy skirt to make. There's not a lot of fitting requirements to it. However, you do need to be very careful in the construction because it requires a lot of folds because in the skirt version um, as you can see there's pleats here and they will take a lot of folding there's a lot of lines to follow so I had to use about five different colours of thread to do all my tailor tacks to mark all the fold lines I'll, I've got a new phone and I can't it's not an iPhone anymore so I can't edit using iMovie so I'm trying to work out how to add photographs into my videos. So hopefully here, I will show you a picture of all my tailor tacks on my um, cutout skirt. Um, so anyway, so I had all these marks, tailor's marks on it, and I was getting really frustrated trying to work out where I was supposed to do um, the folds, where I was supposed to do darts and everything. But once I worked it out, and that was due to me, not the pattern, um, suddenly it became this really easy thing and I'd sewn it up within an hour and a half I think so I thoroughly recommend this skirt I, um, I'd i also really like to do it maybe in um, like a more summery print like this I got some green floral cotton back in the summer from Sal Fabrics which you know I really love <laughs> um, and that I think that was three pounds a meter as well but it's a really beautiful cotton lawn and I thought that would be just perfect in one of these dresses so 
hopefully once the warm weather gets here I shall be um, making up one of those so anyway i wanted to tell you more about the skirt so on the skirt you can see that there is the option for a button placket now i didn't actually do that because i didn't want to add too much bulk around my waist because i felt a bit self-conscious of my tummy so i just did a lapped zipper and then also instead of the pockets um i left it plain so i did put the pockets on to start with but again i just felt there was too much focus on my tummy so i took them off and i felt much more comfortable with it so now technology allowing i'm going to insert a picture of me wearing the skirt um i really really love this skirt it's perfect for my sort of style where i like to give a nod to vintage fashion but also like to you know mix it up a bit and give it a current edge as well so I really love that. Um, now, what you would have seen in the pictures uh, of me wearing it is that I'm wearing it with a blouse, which is the Cali shirt by Closet Case. Now, I wanted there's a there's a choice of views on here, um, and I wanted to do the cropped version but just long enough so I could tuck it in so I think I extended it by um I think it was about five five or eight centimeters I think um and then I also instead of doing the hidden button placket which is what they suggest for the cropped version I did a standard button and I also did a standard collar um and here it is now I used I have to say that all of my um, clothes that I'm showing you today they have all come straight out of the ironing pile so they're all, <laughs> they're all a little bit creased up but so I'm just going to do the button up on this so at least hangs like a slightly presentable piece of clothing but this is my Cali shirt now this fabric I just absolutely love it um, I'll try and do a little close-up for you now this reminds me so much of Lowry, the artist who painted, he's sort of famous for matchstick men, matchstick people. And uh, I did a project on Lowry when I was back at school, like 25 years ago for my GCSEs. And um, I had to sort of base some art designs around Lowry's style. And of course he, his artwork was all painted between the twenties and the fifties. So it fits in perfectly with, again, my sort of inspiration for my, my wardrobe. So I just thought this was absolutely perfect. But what's interesting is of course, I did use a modern pattern. The Cali shirt is not marketed as a vintage style, but I think using, going back to one of the vlogs that I did a little while ago about how you can adapt patterns um, like modern patterns for a vintage style I felt very much that this was a perfect example of that because it kind of ticks all the boxes without having to have sourced you know 19, 1950s 1940s um, blouse pattern which would never have been in my size ever <laughs> um, uh, what else was I going to tell you about that oh no my mind's gone blank um, yeah just that I really love the blouse but funnily enough I don't think I would wear the blouse and the skirt together again um they look nice in the pictures but for me I think that the skirt I like I like the skirt to be the focus in that outfit and I felt that the shirt detracted from that a bit um so I would probably go for like a little just vest top and cardigan um that could then sort of soften the look and um make the skirt a bit more of a feature and the same with the shirt really is that when I wear that I feel like that is the standout thing so um, I've been wearing it with some wide leg jeans and I really liked it with that I thought it was a much nicer sort of look for me and a cropped cardigan so yes yeah, so I'm really pleased with those two things that I made and they were the most demanding things from the whole month so I was glad that I got them done first so that then I could focus on the more fun things which were first of all the Freya top which um is from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book now, I've not really sewn anything out of here before um and to be honest although I've been sewing for about 15 years for the first 10 years I'd really only ever sewn with wovens in fact really only cotton to be fair um and then over the last five five more recent years I've been trying different 
um, fabrics, including jersey. And then really it was only in the last year that I've really properly tried to focus and, and learn how to sew with jersey. And so I thought that actually it would be quite good to have a go at the Freya because it is quite a basic top. And people say that once you've made one, you want to make a million. And I can understand where they're coming from with that. Uh, so this is the one that I made. It was using, I made it using this lovely um, mustard striped ribbed jersey that I also got from Jay at the Fabric ad uh, Edit. And I think I paid £3 a metre for this and it only took just over a metre. So this is a real budget make. So I did go for the high neck, but as you can see when you compare it to this version my neck is a little bit lower and I did that deliberately I didn't want anything quite so high because I sort of wanted it to um, fit in with a few other outfits that maybe wouldn't have worked for high neck and I'm really really pleased with it I did sew the size 8 um, and I'm pleased that I did because I feel like it fits me just perfectly um, sometimes the tilly patterns can come up a bit small on me but this was absolutely fine um the one thing i have learned though is that well no actually the one thing i've learned is that i need to learn more about sewing with jersey um i think i just took it for granted that you know with woven fabrics you can pin them together and you just whip the pin out really near the needle as you're sewing and it's really easy to control but when you're using an overlocker you have to take your pins out a lot earlier because of the knife that's going to cut through the fabric and so it's harder to control the fabrics and you can see the perfect example of how this has happened on the neck because you can see um the first part of the neck is how it should be there but then on this part can you see it's just a little bit shorter where it, the fabric slipped and i hadn't realized in time to be able to correct it but anyway i still really like it it doesn't really notice when I'm wearing it under my dungarees and pinafore dresses and things like that. So it's absolutely fine. Um, but at least I've learned something for next time. Now, the final make that I I did in December was another new um, pattern that I've not tried before. And that is the Astoria sweater by Seamwork. I subscribed to Seamwork um, during Black the Black Friday promotion because they were doing it um the premium subscription was I think seven dollars per month which works out at about five pounds and you got two free patterns per month so I thought that was really worth doing um so this was the first one that I bought so my version is here I used some lovely fabric that I got from the specky seamstress Laura um, she gave it to me. We did a little fabric swap a while ago. And it's so nice because it's a sort of chunky rib. The thing that really drew me to this pattern is that I do like sweatshirts, but I make them and then I don't really wear them because I don't wear a lot of that kind of style of clothes, even when I'm sort of relaxing. So this sweatshirt appealed to me because it's quite a neat fitting sweatshirt and it's cropped so it would just look nice with my high-waisted skirts and jeans and trousers and things now i'd heard that it's quite a tight fit so i thought i might size up i think that i was probably in a I'm trying to remember i think i was between an xl or and a double xl or it might have been between a large and an extra large i can't remember but anyway whichever one it was i went for the bigger size and I tried it on and it was huge <laughs> and didn't have the look that I wanted at all because it wasn't fitted and it, it wasn't cropped really at that size. So I took a load out from the sides, which was great because it did make it much more fitted. But the shoulder seams were still hanging over my shoulder and it just doesn't look like the sweatshirt should look. It still was nice and when I wore it, people did compliment me. So it obviously did look okay. Um, but it just wasn't what I'd wanted from the pattern, which I'm gutted about because I really love the fabric that Laura gave me. And again, this learning process for Jersey. On this one, the problem that I encountered was, I'm just trying to find the bit to show you, here we go. Um, the waistband slipped. So I don't know whether you can see it there.
but I've sort of basically twisted the waistband and there's just a big crease in it and I could cut it off and start again but I don't know how well it'll come out so we'll see um, and I still do sort of want to wear the jumper and I worry that if I cut it off and start again it might not be wearable but these two projects have shown me that what I need to do is baste the fabric together first with some hand stitches so that it doesn't slip and I think that would save so much stress and actually save a lot of time too because I had to go back and sort of put a lot of things right afterwards um, but I'm glad that I've learned those lessons because it's nice to know you can improve isn't it and do better so I'm I'm pleased that I sort of found out about those things and that I can do a better job next time so those are the four things that I made this in December I must admit I was sewing right up to the last day <laughs> but I got it all done and I was really pleased that I did and um, what about you guys did you get any sewing done during December I know it's a busy month for a lot of people so perhaps you didn't get anything done let me know in the comments below do, do you have anything planned for this month are you hoping to um deal with any new year's resolutions regarding sewing have you got any projects in mind let me know um next video that i'm planning is regarding essential sewing supplies because i don't know about you but when i first started sewing i didn't really know what i needed and what people were telling me that i should have um i bought things that probably i didn't need to buy and I discovered things that I actually really needed that I hadn't bought. So uh, I've been really lucky to be given some nice products that I want to show you. But also I want to show you things from my own um, sewing cupboard as well. And just sort of talk about some of the things that you might find essential if you're just starting out sewing. So with that in mind, I would love to hear from anybody who is already a sewist. And find out what your essential sewing um, tool or haberdashery or whatever is um, let me know in the comments below because I will try and feature as many of them as possible in the meantime have a lovely week uh, it's lovely to see you again and happy sewing bye <laughs>